On this episode, you're going to see things you've never seen before as I travel to Port Republic, Maryland to conduct a mentor deer hunt. The Johnsons, as you'll see, are a nice family, true farmers, just good old country folk. I didn't know that country people lived in Maryland, but this was an eye opener and you're going to enjoy this episode. It scared you a little bit, but you're good to go now. <laughs> I'm a born hunter and outdoorsman with a relentless passion for nature. I told myself that if I ever had the opportunity to have my own outdoor show, I would show the things and people we don't traditionally see and that I would be the example for other outdoorsmen to follow. There's a whole different world out there when it comes to the outdoors that people never see. Welcome to the other side. Non-typical Outdoorsman TV is brought to you by individual donors like you and Thoroughgood Boots. Welcome to episode number four. On today's episode, I am up in Port Republic, Maryland doing a mentored adult deer hunt. This deer hunt was designed to create more diversity within hunting in the outdoors. So let's check out this week's episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a special attendee here at the rain session. We have Jennifer Chin. Hi. So Jennifer, this is your first time shooting a long gun other than a BB gun, right? Yes, my first time. But you shot a handgun before? Yes. But you never have shot a rifle, shotgun, or anything? Nope, not at all. Why not? I just haven't had the experience uh -huh. or the opportunity to go shoot and yeah, my family just wasn't hunters. We were mostly fishers. Okay. <laughs> and you, she is of, Jennifer is of Chinese descent, which is a great thing. I love to show diversity here on the show. So what kind of piqued your interest in hunting? Because this rain session today is a train up for a hunt that we're gonna do in two weeks right here on the Johnson's Farm. So what piqued your interest in, in hunting? So I'm really unfamiliar with guns in general and they make me really, really nervous. Okay. So having that exposure and being able to be educated on it is right. what really interested me because there's probably no other opportunity that I would be able to have this experience. That's true. And she mentioned a key thing, y'all. There are not a lot of opportunities available for adults. She's a grown woman, uh, never have hunted, has an interest in hunting, but oftentimes there are hunts designed for youth, youth hunts. I do do youth hunts too, but this hunt that we're preparing, that we're preparing for is all about introducing adults. So I'm so glad that you came, Jen. We're gonna make sure that you can shoot a muzzle loader. Okay. <laughs> uh, let you shoot a 22 long rifle also. Some of the fundamentals and mechanics of a gun. And hopefully come back in two weeks and get you a deer. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, it's my pleasure. We need more people like you out here hunting. So I'm so happy. As me you say, too. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's right. <laughs> I knew you had to say that. I'm so excited. All right. I am. Thank okay. you. All right, so next up we have Brian Dickerson. Brian is from Clinton, Maryland. Brian is a bow hunter. He's hunted a few times with the bow. But he's never hunted a muzzleloader with a muzzleloader, right? Nope, not, never hunted with a muzzleloader. Okay, so what piques your interest in hunting with a muzzleloader versus archery? Most time people do it reverse. They start with a yeah. long gun, then go to archery. Uh -huh. But what about you in, in, in bow hunting? Um, so I, I kind of wanted to hunt with a muzzleloader because it sort of opens up different hunting opportunities. Right. Like um, different states have different regulations as far as when you can use firearms right. and stuff like right. that. So right. I figured it would just be a, another good thing to have under my plate to know how to do. You know, having experience is archery is great, muzzleloader is great. Right. Um, I know you say you got to pull your horses, but. <laughs> <laughs> Horseback ride uh -huh. is a good thing it's to have. Good thing. Yeah, it's a right? good thing to learn. It's a good uh -huh. thing to learn. Yeah. So uh, we, we're going to go out here today, show you how to shoot a muzzle loader, uh, have you hitting targets like a professional. Okay. And then we're going to come back in two weeks and hopefully get you a deer. All right. All right. Like plan. That's right. Sounds good. All right. These are all brothers, ladies and gentlemen. These are all the brothers from the oldest brother to the youngest brother. These are the Johnson brothers on the Johnson farm. So that's good. So y'all ought to know all the nooks and crannies where all the deer are. Huh? That's why you don't want us to go out there, because we, <laughs> we know where they are. Yeah, I know they're okay. 
So I appreciate y'all for letting us come out here and do this hunt. It was supposed to have taken place at another location in Maryland, but uh, things just didn't work out. But I'm so grateful that y'all let us come out and do this hunt right here on y'all property. I appreciate that. This is a muzzle loader. It's called a muzzle loader because it's, you load it from the muzzle, the barrel. This is the barrel of the muzzle loader. This particular muzzle loader has plenty of bullets so you can shoot until your finger gets tired and your hand gets tired. That's what it sounds like, that's what it looks like when you shoot a muzzle loader. Reggie Turner was instrumental in helping Gabby learn the fundamentals of shooting a muzzle loader. Can you like, like bring this over and use it? It's gonna take a little strength to pull that back. Yep. Right. It scared you a little bit, but you're good to go now. <laughs> and the lessons from the mentors just kept on coming. Up, but as soon as you go to pull it like that, now everything is out of whack. So you want to squeeze. It's supposed to shock you that it even fired. You're supposed to be like, oh, it fired. Yeah. Hey, put it right down the center of the cross here. I mean, on, on that target. Dead center. Dead center. Dead center. <laughs> Dead center. <laughs> All right, Brian, don't get started. <laughs> I'm good. You're good. <laughs> hey, she put it right through the center of it, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. You hit it. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. See a hole right there? No. You don't see it. Right <laughs> I'm still, I'm like, <laughs> it's interesting. Thurgood has been trusted by tradespeople and hardworking Americans since 1892, an employee-owned company with two manufacturing facilities in Wisconsin. Thurgood has over 125 styles of handcrafted American-made footwear. Our focus is job-fitted footwear for the trades, public safety workers, military, and hunters. Thurgood's job-fitted boots are built to get the job done. Visit ThurgoodUSA.com to find a dealer near you, and trust Thurgood to take you through your life's pursuits. Everett Johnson Jr., the son of the property owner, showed us around the property and showed us where to put up blinds to have the most success. The first morning of the hunt, it didn't take long before Brian to get comfortable and uh, fall asleep. And I don't blame him, I blame his chair. He has one of those high-tech walking slash hunting chairs that even has shocks on it, so I don't blame him for going to sleep. We did have a four-point bug run behind the line, but it was so fast that we couldn't even get a shot or the camera on it. On another part of the property, Chris and Varia were hunting and saw a doe within range, but Varia, being one of the mentors, decided to pass up on that doe and let one of the hunters have a shot at it the next day. After the morning hunt, we took a break, went back up to the um, pasture, met Tierra, Varia's cousin, and uh, checked out Wayne Wallace on his uh, Tennessee walker putting his horse through some paces. After eating lunch, it was back to the blind for the evening hunt and we were optimistic that we would see something and get something during this sitting. After not seeing anything, it was time to call it a hunt and head back to camp right, to enjoy some camaraderie. I keep telling you. Uh, there you go. Oh, you got an actual chair. Oh, yeah. Got on this oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That looks good. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. That looks good. The next morning, I was in the blind with Jennifer Chen, an employee of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. She was ready. She really wanted to shoot a buck, but unfortunately, we didn't see anything this morning either. Okay, at this point, y'all, I was getting concerned. We had been out already two hunts on day one, no deer. After the morning hunt, no deer on day two. So I figured it was best to go back and ask Everett, hey man, where do we need to set up to increase our chances of getting a deer? Okay, but this, this side over here, along the road with the blinds on the hill, mm -hmm. somebody needs to be there. But if you walk down that road, you just sit up against a tree. 
but they're gonna come off that, they cut all the beans out of the field. Okay. So they're gonna be passing through, back and forth on the hillside. Tiara and her cousin Barry right. had a first I, call, I'll but no good. dead deer. Nice. <laughs> <stand up. laughs> I had probably the perfect chance for a first kill ever. <laughs> the deer waited for us for probably two or three minutes, and she gave us a little sigh. We were talking. I saw her first. She didn't even notice. Right, I mean, right, as, right as I had, tight. yeah, right as I had her in my sight. Daria decides that she needs to give me a little bit more space and open because she the was going to shoot right the through the window. It. It's, Vel it's Velcro, so the Velcro goes, and she runs off. It was, it was so disappointing because <laughs> we really, I, I really, really, really had a shot. Like, and, and that would have been my first, and that would have been, that would have been perfect. She was big too. And Gabby had a few questions for Jennifer during the break. So, what do you like most about your job? So, I currently work for the Federal Duck Stamp Program, and what I love about it is just being able to learn more about waterfowl. And I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, but most people, when they think of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, they think of park rangers and things like that. So, it's nice to know that there's other programs, like the Migratory Bird Program, that you can get into. Okay. So what makes you keep coming back to work every day? <laughs> I love my boss, Suzanne. Um, she's amazing and such a great support. So having someone like that to support you throughout your career is just an amazing thing. And I wanted to tell you since you're 11, that when I was in seventh grade, I wanted to be a marine biologist. And then in college, I studied hurricanes and I wanted to be you know, like, again, a meteorologist. And then I worked for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and everything changed. And originally I was a park ranger and I worked for the Park Service and again, park ranger as U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service sold me on their mission and just how great they are at protecting wildlife. Okay. Wow. My name is Gabrielle Catherine Cole from Haymarket, Virginia. I'm 11 years old. I just caught my first fish, and you're watching non typical outdoorsman TV. Hey, everybody, be sure to check out my show, non typical outdoorsman TV, right here on the Pursuit Channel, Mondays at 6 a.m. and Sundays at 5 p.m., and follow me on my quest to bring more diversity to the outdoors. The show is unlike anything you've ever seen, so don't miss it. From hogs to deer to upland birds and more, you'll be glad that you tuned in. The show is all about affordable adventures, introducing new hunters, diversity, and inclusion. So be sure to watch Non Typical Outdoors on TV, the most diverse outdoor show on the planet. During the evening hunt, Jen and I set up the blind beside a old house overlooking the field. Eric guaranteed us that deer would be moving along that field before sunset. Just as Brian was taking aim at a doe out across the field, Jen had a deer right behind the thick part of this blind that you can't see, right to the left of this tree. And when he shot, the deer bolted. She was not happy about it at all. So here I am here in Port Republic, Maryland, at the home of the Johnson, Mr. Everett Johnson, and then Miss Lugenia Johnson, his wife. I want to first thank you all for letting me come out and conduct a uh, mentor to dove hunt on y'all farm. It was a uh, great weekend, a lot of people experiencing their first hunt, their first time with the muzzleloader. Unfortunately, they didn't shoot anything. They had a couple of new close calls, near misses, but mm -hmm. what do you all think about uh, the hunt and why it's important to uh, have hunts such as this? Well, first I would like to just tell you that it was great to have you here. And I would just like to let you know that uh, you got here through a family affair that wasn't for my brother Lankford, my brother Michael, my brother yep. Tony and me. Yep. We would not have this place, so we are really appreciative of you coming here and having your hunt. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what I think about honey, with all the deer that we do have, you didn't see, but with all the deer we do have around here and the, the culture of hunting, where back in the day, that was part of your meal. That's right. So it's very important that you continue to do that. Never know, you might have to go back to 
hunting for rabbit and squirrel and That's deer. right. That's right. So I agree. It's, it's a great deal to yes, mm -hmm. keep hunting going. Right. And now you don't hunt, Miss Johnson. Right. But you are known uh, from what you say from cooking outstanding wild game meals. Oh sure. Yes. And you're from Alabama. I'm from Alabama. Selma part down around Selma area. Wilcox County. Wilcox County. So she is um, a fellow Alabamian. I'm from Talladega, Alabama. And I know that by you being a southerner from Alabama, you like a certain dish that we all eat in the South. So I brought a gift from the South, although y'all say that Maryland is the South, but Alabama really is the South. I brought you some grits. Oh, good. And Jim Dandy. Jim Dandy, yes, ma'am. That's the best kind. That's Jim Dandy grits. Grit. Yes, ma'am. So, um, thank you. You're more than welcome. So, I appreciate y'all letting me come up. Is there anything you want to say about this weekend or anything you just want to say in general? Well, I'm excited to know that you all are still hunting. Yes, ma'am. Because this is going to be a source of our meats eventually. That's right. And uh, younger people need to know what they can eat and what they cannot eat. Right. And right. I grew up on many different wild games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I tried to encourage my children, mm -hmm. which my son, he loves them. That's right, Everett. Yes, so right. I am a great preparer of wild games. I heard. I, and I got to come to one of those meals one day, so <laughs> I will. Well, thank you all for uh, taking time to you know, sit down and talk with me, you know, and everything, and to let, again for letting me come up to do the hunt. And I uh, do plan. I know that your son mentioned that he would like for this same hunt to happen here again next year. Yes. So I'll be more than happy to come up. Are there any parting words you want to say to America and to anyone? I would say to America is to back your program. Thank your you. Program, your <laughs> Thank program you. is very important, and I believe we can get more of the younger generation into hunting if we would, we would sponsor your program and, and put the word out about your program because right, right. I think it's a very need of a program like yours. Thank you. Thank for you. For the younger I, generation. Thank you. I do my best. Yeah. yeah. That. You're, doing, you're doing a great job and for my first time hearing about your program, of course, he knew about it before I did ever my son. Right. And, and uh, I'm glad that he found you and so now we can proceed on and right. try to make it bigger. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the support because it was uh, it's, it's a small world yeah. and originally this hunt was going to take place on one of the federal refuges, one of the National Wildlife Refuges. Mm -hmm. But uh, things couldn't quite come to uh, terms mm -hmm. so uh, this was a fallback. And yeah. like I said, I'm so grateful that you all, you know, you all let yeah. me come out to do the hunt here because yeah. there's a need for what I do. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, as you said, you know, it's important to get the younger generation, uh, as well as some of the, the, you know, people my age. I'm 49, yeah. and there's a lot of parents who adults who never did get the introduction True. to hunting to hunt. and are yeah. looking for that yes. introduction. So I really appreciate that. They even invited me to sit down for a Sunday dinner, and I'm telling y'all, there was some good cooking. Yep, Miss Johnson, she's definitely from the South. You know, even though there were no deer shot on this hunt, it was a great introduction to hunting for the new hunters and a great experience overall. Both new hunters and mentors alike learned a few lessons as to what it actually takes to be successful on a hunt. A lot of times on TV, we see a hunt and we think that it's just that easy. But oftentimes what we see on TV is a result of two, three, four, five different attempts at getting the animal. So it's not as easy as it looks, but that's okay. Next year, we're going to come back to the Johnson Farm and do the same hunt there in Maryland during the muzzleloader season in 2021. And this time, y'all, we're going to get some deer. Trivia question. Where is the Mason-Dixon line? Thoroughgood has been trusted by tradespeople and hardworking Americans since 1892, an employee-owned company with two manufacturing facilities in Wisconsin. Thoroughgood has over 125 styles of handcrafted American-made footwear. Our focus is job-fitted footwear for the trades, public safety workers, military, and hunters. Thoroughgood's job-fitted boots are built to get the job done. Visit ThoroughgoodUSA.com to find a dealer near you. And trust Thoroughgood to take you through your life's pursuits. Trivia question. Where is the Mason-Dixon line? Answer. The Mason-Dixon line is the historic boundary that lies between Pennsylvania and Maryland. It was surveyed from 1763 to 1767 by Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon to settle the border disputes between the two provinces. For this next segment, I'll be talking about staying prepared. 2020 has been off the chain, and let's admit it, y'all, let's face it. 2020 taught a lot of people some important lessons about being prepared. A lot of people were caught completely off guard with 2020, with the food shortage ammunition shortage, everybody trying to go out and buy a gun, can't find guns, 
being denied the right to buy a gun, all types of things going on. So for these next few minutes, I'm gonna discuss a few things that will help you all stay prepared no matter what turbulent times we may face ahead. We owe it to ourselves to be prepared. This means having the ability to take care of ourselves and our family when our communities or cities fall apart. Food, water, money, firearms, and ammunition are among my top choices for things needed in order to be prepared. We have a great country, but let's face it, 2020 showed us how quickly things and people can turn ugly. When it comes to firearms, you should have a gun that can serve double duty as a hunting gun and a self-protection gun. As far as I'm concerned, everybody should own a handgun and a long gun, such as a rifle or a shotgun. Personally, I prefer a 12-gauge shotgun. A lot of people were scrambling this year to buy guns, and some people were refused entry into stores, and some store owners just flat out refused to sell law-abiding citizens guns. When you do get a gun, it's important for you to train with that firearm to make sure that you know how to operate it and to be able to shoot and move with that with that gun. Having one just laying around the house that you never touch is not going to do you any good when you need it. As far as ammunition, you can never have too much ammo. You need at least 300 rounds for each one of your guns. Shells got real empty this year, real fast, and some of these stores have not had ammunition in stock for months. So it's, why it's good to practice at the range to make sure that you're familiar with your gun and to make sure that you, that you can hit what you're aiming at. Don't keep going to the range, blowing your ammunition basically down the tube when you're shooting it down range. Save that ammo, particularly for times like this when ammo is hard to come by. Save that ammo for a rainy day. As far as water, every home should be stocked with at least two months worth of water for each person in the home. You should also learn how to purify and drink river water, rain water, and water from other sources. As far as food, we also saw this year that shelves and grocery stores can become empty faster than you can blink your eye due to pandemics, social unrest, or natural disasters. So each home should have enough food to last at least two months or more. Non-perishable foods such as beans, pasta, will last for years. So will canned goods and fruits, vegetables, and meats can be canned or preserved in jars. Hunting and farming also allows you to be self-sufficient as well as fishing and allows you to feed your family during these unstable times. By following these tips, you will ensure that you and your family are prepared for just about anything that comes your way. Get into the habit of being self-sufficient, physically fit, and self-reliant. Thanks for watching this episode of Non-Typical Outdoorsman TV.